Joining me now is Stacy Rasgun, a senior semiconductor analyst at Bernstein. Stacy, you're literally not buying it, keeping your $43 price target on this stock that's at about 63. It would seem that if there's any time to sort of bet on Intel, now would be that time. Why do you why are you unimpressed? Well, yeah, you know, I, you know, I heard you referring to cheap hope. So, like that—that that is the you know the phrase that we've been using for a while. It's not just. But if it's cheap, cheap, why not buy it? Expensive hope isn't that worse? Well, look, in tech, by the way, cheap is never a reason to buy a stock all by itself. <laughs> just like expensive is never a reason to sell a stock in tech all by itself. Like you need more than than cheap. Um, now you do have the hope piece of this, and by the way, like don't there, I, I like that. <laughs> And this is one thing that Pat's been very good at doing. Pat, Pat can bring, bring hope, right? He's been doing the stocks up, I don't know what it is, 25% or something since he took the job. Um, and he can give credibility. Like, he's more capable of correctly judging the risks and the opportunities from whatever the opportunities are, are in front of him versus, say, the prior management team. Um, maybe he can do something on, you know, on the HR side and keep talent there and everything. So these, these are all good things that Pat can do. At the same time, you, you know, it's sort of interesting. The part of the bull case on the stock like two or three months ago was they were going to go fab light. <laughs> and now it's like we're going to double down on everything. And, and, you know, we've been having execution issues, but we're going to fix those execution issues. Plus, we're going to outsource more. Plus, we're going to enter this, this brand new business, which is massively capital intensive, and go head to head with TSMC um, and execute on everything like cleanly where they haven't been able to do that before. Like, it, it's a lot to take in mm -hmm. at this point. Um, it is. I think you look... The hope is going to be that, and by the way, I think that the, the, the general, you know, like kind of like, like transition economics are going to get worse. I mean, they already lowered guidance this year. You can actually see in the gross margins and free cash flow, the economics are getting worse. My guess is that hasn't stopped. The hope is going to be that like with, with foundry or with everything else, that they can give some certainty for what a trough earnings will be and that it won't go lower. And that on that number, the stock's still inexpensive enough where you can take a flyer on, on, on the long term. That's kind of what I mean by cheap hope. The problem right now is we don't actually know what the trough earnings are. Right. The revenues well, right now are, are inflated. I know he was talking about a 10-year cycle, which by the way, he's probably right. But like PCs are running at levels that were close to the 2011 peak, like after a year or two. I don't think Let that me that's ask possible. you the inverse of the question that I asked him. Because if I sure. step back, interest rates are low. There's more reason than ever for the U.S. government and government in Europe yes. to support exactly what Intel is trying to do. He is, on paper, the guy for this job. But, as you point out, they have failed at Foundry before, and the full-year guide doesn't look great. So how will we know if yeah. Pat Gelsinger is failing at the end of 2021? Yeah. And this is interesting, by the way, because like, you know, he got there, I don't know, five, six weeks ago, officially. They didn't throw this, this together in five or six weeks. They hadn't been do, working on this before, but I don't think Bob Swan could have sold this to the street. Like, Pat can, right? He's got that credibility, so that's probably one reason Pat had to, had to go. Um, in terms of the subsidies, you're, you're absolutely right. And by the way, this is, this is not a dumb thing that they're doing, right? If, if there's any time, like, we've got a perfect storm in semis right now where they can take advantage of this and they can actually get external subsidies from the government to do this, that's great. I'm less convinced that it's all going to the foundry business. I mean, even if they're building up foundry initially, it's going to be very, very small, right? Like that, 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 those dollars, that capacity they're building will be for themselves. And then over time, if, as foundry grows, it'll take more and more of that. So, and then if foundry fails, I mean, they don't have to give the tools back. So if, in some sense, if they're, they've got a structurally higher CapEx, they're, they're 20 billion they're guiding for this year is for themselves. It's not for the foundry business. If their capex is going to be running that high, if they can actually get some money from the government to help offset the, that, that, that's not a dumb thing. That's a very smart plan, in that sense. But in general, like I said, the, the the costs are going up, the economics are going to get worse, and we'll just have to see kind of what they say in terms of monitoring this stuff. But I mean, we're really not going to see anything in terms of like actual like like numbers that you can really tie into for until 2023 or probably even beyond that. And and the roadmap for the next several years is baked, right? The AMD story, like they're still going to be taking share. Apple's still going to be moving away. You've got ARM getting deployed in much bigger numbers, both in PCs and the data center. Like that is all going to happen. Yeah. There's no way to stop it. And those are just based on decisions that were made several years ago, just like the, the capacity decisions that he was talking about. You know, hard to argue with what you're saying. Uh, you know, I, I will say what's interesting about the Microsoft story over the past decade was that the multiple expansion came before the real shift in numbers. The story there and the street believing that story also had a big impact. Stacey, we've got to leave it there for now. Um, you know, quite a lot for investors to take in, whether to, oh, yeah. whether to eat these chips. Stacey Rasgun. <laughs> Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.